uh, com to biomass um, with under either no oxygen or reduced oxygen. And we're going to get way into the science of that later on. But that's what it is. And so what happens in that thermochemical conversion process or that baking process? Well, what happens is the carbon that's in the biomass, you know, and biomass is, is mainly carbohydrates and um, hydrocarbons, that carbon, when it's heated, will link up into these what are called fused carbon rings. It's also called aromatic carbon. These are terms from organic chemistry that can be kind of confusing, but the essence of it is that um, you bake the biomass, gases are released of, that include mainly hydrogen and oxygen. So the hydrogen and oxygen leave from the carbohydrate and you're left with the carbon. The carbon atoms fuse together in these hexagonal rings. And that is actually a, a, um, a microscopic picture of some of those rings fused together. There's amazing imaging that's going on now in science and it's this beehive hexagonal pattern. So here, uh, can, it, can you all see from back there? I, um, anyway, um, so this kind of shows the process at a molecular scale and then at a cellular, cellular scale. What happens when you take the biomass, which at a molecular scale is composed of lignin, cellulose, and hemicellulose, but lignin is the, the, the part of biomass that has the most carbon that's already fused in carbon rings. So you can see, you know, there's a lot of these hexagonal shapes in the lignin molecule. And when you add heat, all these other things that are attached, the hydrogen and oxygen vaporize, and the, the carbon molecules link up into these fused rings. And they tend to form these sheets, these little sheets. And they'll kind of jumble up together, you know, kind of zooming out a little bit from this view, they'll jumble up together into these little sections of what we call graphene sheets. And, and um, then, uh, you know, if a, a biochar particle might look at like this, a whole jumbled bunch of these little graphene sheets. So, and then the cool thing about it is that at the cellular scale, it retains the structure of the plant. If you're using wood, you know, you have the whole vascular system structure of the plant that's retained. And so you end up with porosity at different scales. Uh, my, nano, micro, and macro porosity in this material. And that has really interesting implications for, for um, life forms colonizing it. And it also provides incredible amounts of surface area where different kinds of chemical reactions happen. So that's kind of the, the key to what biochar is and what it does. Um, so, on a big scale, what are the benefits of biochar? Now that we know kind of what it is, well, these are the benefits that, that uh, the academic scientists have kind of come up with when they think about how to, inter how to actually integrate biochar into our, um, our agricultural and in industrial systems, with the kind of things it can do. And you might even think of activated carbon because that's a material a lot of people are familiar with. You know it's good for filtration and odor control and other things. So um, what biochar is good for is waste management, <coughs> mitigation of pollution and also climate change, soil improvement of course, you know I think that's why most of you are here, and then also energy production which can be a byproduct of the biochar production process. So those are sort of social and, and financial benefits of biochar. That, that could be realized if it's integrated into our current systems. And this is another look at biochar benefits, this nice little graphic of a tree that combines the benefits into, it's probably hard for you guys in the back to see, but atmospheric benefits and soil benefits. So soil benefits include things like decreased nutrient runoff because biochar will grab nutrients. Um, and improved soil water holding capacity, that's probably one of the biggest benefits of biochar right now that people are realizing it can 
really reduce your use of water. Um, and then in, as far as the atmospheric benefits, it can reduce greenhouse gas emissions when it's placed in soil. It um, stabilizes carbon from biomass that would otherwise be emitted as CO2, so it's carbon sequestration. And of course it can absorb various pollutants and it's very useful in remediation. <laughs> So here's just another little, here's a quote I really like that just gives another clue as to why biochar could be so important in all these systems. Because life is based on carbon. And I love this quote from this, this um, book, um, Courtney White, author of Grass, Soil, and Hope, said, carbon is promiscuous. It forms more compounds than any other element with almost 10 million compounds discovered to date, a tiny fraction of all that are theoretically possible. Carbon especially likes to bond with other small molecules, including carbon molecules, carbon atoms. So it's capable of forming these long chains of stable and complex molecules that are important to life. Um, and that's why it's found in so many different forms on Earth. So with that, I'm going to actually skip forward because we're going to go out in the field here um, and burn some things. So I'm going to skip forward to the part of this presentation where I talk about energy.